What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with part three of the Puma 700 build. So we're going to get started on page 24 of the manual. We're going to get building of the tail casing and get the tail boom done. We're going to try to get as much done in this video as we possibly can and hopefully part four we can start the wiring and get ready to fly this thing because I am super excited. I love the raw 580 so much. I can't wait to try the 700. So I'm going to get everything we need ready, set out on the table, get the tripod set up, and let's get All the right, building. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and start building the tail casing, so, or, or the tail assembly, not just the casing. So what we're going to do is we are going to start with our main shaft, okay, and then you're going to have your O-rings here. Now I just ran out of uh, micro lube and can't find any. So I'm just going to be using some of my good old grease until my new stuff gets in here this week. Really any grease will work as long as it's not a petroleum based grease you will be good to go and you just want to get a little bit on these o-rings so they're not dry when you are assembling them. As we've gone over in other builds you never want it to be dry. So grab your tail shaft, spindle, tail feathering shaft, whatever you want to call it and go ahead and get it pushed through. Now remember when you're doing this be careful on the grease that you use because you don't want to get any grease down inside the threads of the tail feathering shaft. And also you can use a little driver to help get this o-ring if it sticks out like this. You want to get these o-rings in. So you can actually use a little 1.5 driver and carefully push the o-ring into here like this. So now that we got the o-rings pushed in there nice and carefully and that's what the grease helps lubricate and stops it from tearing or ripping. So now we're gonna grab ourselves one of our little brass washer spacers. We're going to slide this guy on here like this. Then we're gonna grab one of these little washers and we are going to slide this guy on here like this. And remember, the other side will be done the exact same way. It can be a little tricky. Be careful. Get that guy to slide on. So now we're going to grab ourselves a tail blade grip. Now they come preloaded, meaning there's bearing. The main bearings are in there. We just need to install the thrust bearings. So we're going to set our shaft aside. And I have what we're going to do for the thrust bearings now. So we're going to grab ourselves a one millimeter, 1.5 driver. It doesn't have to be a 1.5. It's just what I prefer. So now you're going to ass assemble this as it goes into the blade grip. So we're going to grab a, there's two different sizes here. So a way to check this is you have two different sizes. You don't know which side is bigger or smaller because you have a smaller ID and a larger ID. Put it on the tail shaft and wiggle it around. Okay, so that's going to be the smaller ID. Set it aside. Grab the other one, and that's going to be the larger ID. You can tell it's got more play in it. So, now we know which one's smaller, which one's larger. So, we're going to go small ID. Okay, and then we're going to grab our thrust bearing. Remember, close side towards the feathering or shaft bolt. Open side out. And then remember that you put the groove side on the actual and then larger ID. And then you're gonna grab one of these little brass spacers. You're gonna slide that guy in there like this. So now that's the stack you're gonna have. You're going to slide it into the tail casing, just like this. Drop it, wiggle it, make sure that that guy drops down there nice and neatly. We have that complete side in there. We're gonna grab our tail shaft and we're gonna use the side that we already put the washers on we're going to put a little bit of grease on there just like this we're going to take that little bit of grease and we're going to rub it around okay that looks good and then we're going to grab our blade grip tail grip that has our screws or our thrust bearings in it we're going to just gently slide it down into place we're just going to set it down like this you are going to grab a two and a half millimeter driver and of course, remember to lock tight your screw. Put a just a little line of it. I like to let it sit for a second, let it run in. Now, if you're not careful, you can get too much lock tight and what'll happen is it'll run out and actually lock into the, the thrust bearing and give you a gritty tail. So that's never good. So now we're gonna go ahead and install the other side and then lock them two down and you just repeat the same process on the other side and we'll move on. 
we're going to need two two and a half millimeter drivers and you're going to just go ahead and crank this down tighten it up now it is going to feel a little tight but it's smooth it's just tight sab says that's normal make sure that that is tight torque them down but don't over torque them to the point where you snap the screw off but torque them down so now the tail grips are done everything is loctited screws are cleaned with rubbing alcohol free of any uh machining oil so now let's move on to installing our pitch slider so now on our pitch slider we're going to have our little plastic links okay and these little plastic links are just going to simply push into here like this but before we push those little links into place make sure you put these little plastic inserts in so there's a little plastic insert make sure you push that guy into there and then you slide this assembly down into here Okay, now roll it over. We're gonna grab, there's two different size screws here. You're gonna have a uh, six millimeter screw and a, I guess they're all six millimeter screws. Six millimeter screw and six millimeter screw. So I guess they're not different lengths. They definitely look different. No, they're not, okay. So two millimeter driver, or one and a half millimeter driver, I'm sorry. One and a half millimeter driver. All right, so on these screws, one and a half millimeter driver and we're using retaining compound. So I'm just using SAB retaining compound. Just gonna put a little line, just like I do with Loctite. And again, make sure that you have inserted that little plastic insert there. And again, you don't wanna use Loctite on this because Loctite eats plastic and retaining compound does not. So retaining compound go ahead and screw this down tighten it up make sure that it is still free you want to make sure it is smooth and you are no binding no tightness so go ahead do the other side and we'll so move next, on grab your tail assembly and we're going to install the ball links on so for the ball links you need a one and a half millimeter driver with your screw we have already put retaining compound on and we need a two millimeter driver for your ball link so i'm just going to put a dab of retaining compound on the inside of the link just because i want to make sure that we get some good retaining compound now it's going to slide through use your one and a half millimeter driver to hold it and just go ahead and tighten it down get it nice and tight and then go ahead of course and do the same on the other side here and we'll move on we got both ball links on everything is tightened down incredible quality as always from sab just fantastic so now we're going to grab our pitch slider assembly and now you will micro lube this up uh, i'm waiting on some to come in the mail so i will do that later but go ahead grease that up use whatever grease you want to use and then just simply pop these ball links on let them snap into place. Make sure SAB is facing out. Now you should have a nice and free tail assembly. Make sure it is free and smooth. No binding for proper tail control and no wag. So now let's move on. So now we're gonna start on the tail casing. So you're gonna need box two, bag 25 is gonna give you all everything that you need. Your bearings for the tail casing are already pre-installed. So now look at your casing, you'll see which way it goes. These cutout here go to the right side of the helicopter. That is what your arms are gonna bolt onto and that is where your pitch slider and everything will come off of. So I already went ahead and cleaned the tail fin off really good, rubbed it down with rubbing alcohol, cleaned all the excess carbon and got the yellow vinyl. You can put whatever color vinyl you want. So we're gonna grab our belt and we're gonna slide our belt through the tail casing. And we're going to set that aside for a second. Now grab a two millimeter Allen wrench. And I put the Allen in here. So we're going to remove the Allen for now and set that guy aside. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the pulley in. And we want the screw heads facing the right side. So the same side that has the cutouts that we need for the markers or for the little brackets. So we're just going to slide that through there like this. And then we are going to grab our tail slider and let's just slide this guy through. So now on your tail slider, when you're lining all this up, you'll notice something. So you'll notice that there's a divot and you guys already know if you've watched builds before, you want your set screw to slide into that divot. So before we go ahead and slide this on, just to make it easier for us, we are going to grab our little bracket and now there's a lip make sure that lip is facing down 
So this bracket is going to go onto this bottom hole here. Yeah, because it can't fit here, so we're gonna go to this bottom hole. So we're gonna make sure that lip is facing down. We are going to grab our two and a half millimeter, or two millimeter, I'm sorry, not two and a half, two millimeters, so we gotta take the set screw off. And we are using blue Loctite. So let's go ahead and Loctite one screw, get ready. Let's make sure that lip is facing down. We're gonna feed our screw through these holes here. Let's get this one started. You're gonna go ahead, run the other one down and go ahead and tighten these up. Now that we got that bracket put on there, we're going to align our pulley up, grab our tail half or slider, and we're going to slide this all into here. And then we're going to rotate this pulley here until we can see that hole. So, can you see that? Yes, we can. So you see how solid shaft and then divot. So you wanna look for that divot, grab your set screw with Loctite, go ahead and run it down. Now you will feel when it gets in there, you should be able to feel, before you tighten it down, you should be able to grab and rock this side to side. We know that we are in the middle of that hole. So now we can go ahead and lock this down. Now we know that we are in that little flat spot and this shaft is not going to slide. So we know that we're locked and we're good. We'll come back with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, paper towel, wipe that up. Clean up the access Loctite. So now we're gonna flip this guy over. Okay, and we're gonna look at it this way now. So now we are going to grab our pitch link slider arm, whatever you wanna call this. And we are going to note the direction this is going to go. So. We need it to go this way. So you want your arm on this side for your push rod, and you want the little arm going down to this ball link. So now this ball link is going to be simple. You're gonna grab one of these balls right here, and it's going to be a two millimeter driver, and you are going to use, I believe, retaining compound. And that's what it looks like, retaining compound. So we're gonna use, actually, we're gonna use Loctite. Yeah, we're gonna use Loctite. No retaining compound, I just looked. You're gonna take this little washer here and you're going to slide this into here like this. And then you are going to note the direction again. So let's just double check. So we put it on the right way. SAB facing out and up. So your ball is gonna go on this side. So go ahead and screw this down. Tighten it up. And now we know that this, let's just do a test fit, is going to drop into there and sit down there like that. So now we can grab our other ball here, which is a two millimeter driver. This one is getting retaining compound, not Loctite. So we're gonna put a little bit of retaining compound inside the ball. And we're gonna grab our other screw, which is going to be this little guy right here. And it looks like a one and a half millimeter driver. Put a little bit more retaining compound on this guy. Just so we're covered on the retaining compound aspect. Now, what we need to know is that we need the ball up. So this one is going to go ball up. So they will be opposite of each other. One will be ball down, one will be ball up. Go ahead and snug these guys together. You don't need to go overboard to the point to where you break them, you just need them to be tight. So now you should have what this looks like. So the line with the white line goes to the actual ball side and now this will sit down into here like this. And that will be your pitch slider. So now you grab this screw, which is going to be the big M3 by 22 millimeter. And that is going to be a two and a half millimeter driver. We're gonna use retaining compound. And I like to just do a line all the way down it like that and then let it soak, roll it over, do a line all the way down it, let it soak, and it soaks down inside and gets into where it needs to go. And you can use a one and a half millimeter driver to, or any kind of small driver to help align that little insert. No washers, no nothing. We can go ahead, slide this screw through, make sure we still have a good amount of retaining compound, line that ball up, and go ahead and tighten this down. So now we have completely assembled tail assembly. 
nice and free and smooth. Now I have no grease on anything on the shaft yet. I will get some grease tomorrow. It'll be in the mail so I can get some more uh, SAB grease on there until I can find some more micro loop. So now we're gonna grab our tail fin. So you can go ahead, grab your tail fin, grab your two shorter screws. They're gonna be a two and a half millimeter driver. They're the little guys. Grab your Loctite, get those screws Loctited up. Move the camera away a little bit so you guys had a, a better angle, a, a, a wider view, not a better angle, but a wider view. So we're gonna grab our tail casing and this is just self-explanatory and simple. You're gonna go to these two holes right here. You're gonna grab your screw, run it through, get it started just like this. Grab your next screw, do the same thing, get it started. We already put Loctite on there. I want to get a little bit more. Go through here just like that. Tighten these two down. And now we can grab the boom and get the belt through the actual boom itself. So now we're going to grab our boom and just look at the carbon fiber. It looks so good. Like the quality is incredible. And you'll notice on this end where it clamps into the fuselage, they have a piece of aluminum in there. And it only goes in a couple inches, it goes into about here. So that way, when you squeeze it down, you don't crush the carbon. They really thought of everything. So now you're gonna go ahead and slide your belt through the boom. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. You can try to just push, and you can pretty much with this size boom, you can get the belt all the way through the boom. If you're having any troubles, now you gotta remember doing it this way, you could get some twists in the belt. You see how it's all twisted up? So what I recommend doing, pull the boom, the belt out, pull on it, give it a nice tug, stretch it out, make sure that that boom is nice and straight, or that belt is nice and straight. And then once you push it through the boom, you still might get a little bit of twist, but once we get it out the other end, we can straighten the belt out and make sure that we don't have any twists going on but you wanna make sure that you're doing the tail casing on the end with the two holes and no aluminum. So I'm gonna get this belt pushed through and we'll get ready to mount. All right, so you're just gonna push it through and then go ahead and slide your casing in till your holes line up, okay? Two millimeter driver, get your screw ready with some Loctite. Go ahead and get one started, snug it down. And then you can go ahead and lock the other three down. So go ahead, put your other one here and your other two back here, and we'll be ready for the, now next, the next step. step. We're going to grab our push rod guide, and we're going to measure, which I already did this, but from this back of the, the boom lip here, you want 400 millimeters, which equals out to almost 15 and three quarters, which puts me right here on this boom now measure yours just to be safe because they might the sticker might be in a different place on yours than it is on mine you're not going to use any loctite or anything you are going to so you're going to screw this all the way in tighten it down and we can move on to mounting the tail servo so now we're going to mount the tail servo so you're going to grab your tail servo bracket sab logo so this is going to be the back of the helicopter this is what's going to go mounting into the helicopter which i'll show you in a second you're going to grab your tail servo and you are going to have it where wires to the back and servo spline to the back now i don't have a servo horn right this second it's actually be here tomorrow as well so i'm going to skip the step right now of mounting the actual servo horn but it is self-explanatory and remember, use your Loctite. Loctite your screws. Go ahead and screw your servo completely down. And then we can put the whole tail servo bracket into the helicopter. Now let's mount the tail servo into the helicopter. So right here on this guide rail, you're gonna have two holes here and here. Those are the two holes that you will be running your screws through. So we're going to slide this guy up in here like this. We're going to drop the screw like we always have to because you can never do anything without dropping a screw at least one time. Two and a half millimeter driver. Get one started. Snug it down. And we'll grab our next screw. Loctite it. Of course, you want servo spline to the back and wire to the back. Grab your next screw. Grab, drop it down in there. Tighten both of these up and then we can get ready to put the boom block mounts in. All 
All right, so now we're gonna grab our boom block mounts. You're gonna grab these little screws here and you're gonna slide these guys through and put the lock nuts on the back side. So now remember, no Loctite on lock nuts because of the elastic stop nut. So you're just gonna slide it in there. Don't tighten these up yet. Just go ahead and carefully and loosely, not carefully, just loosely, just get them started just like that and then you'll do the same to your other one right, for so now that we got that done take your back this is your back ones with the sab on it is the back boom mount you're going to put this little rubber guy in here just put this little rubber guard in there like this and then set that aside now grab your front mount okay and we want it to be goes in the helicopter like this bolt hole to the left and it's going to go in the front of the helicopter on this screw and this screw hole so you're going to just slide this thing down in like this you know line those two screw holes up two and a half millimeter driver make sure again that you use loctite get that screw started grab your next screw hopefully this is a better camera angle for you drop the screw on the ground because you always have to drop them. Remember Loctite. And then run that screw all the way down. Grab your next one, SAB logo facing up, screw hole to the bottom left corner. Line that one up like that. Loctite, two and a half millimeter driver. Run your screw down. Drop your next screw in the hole before tightening it. Get this other one started so that way this boom mount doesn't go in crooked because it can. You can you can get them in there crooked. And then you can cross thread and fighting and it's never fun. Take yourself a little paper towel, rubbing alcohol, get rid of all the excess Loctite just so you have a nice clean build when you're done. You don't have excess Loctite all over the place that looks terrible. So now go through, make sure you tighten them up. Look at it, make sure bottom screw left. And the same with this back one that you can't really see on camera. Bottom screw right here to the left. All right, now let's get ready to slide the boom in. So right before we slide the boom in, go ahead and grab this little 3D printed lock that they give you. Push this tensioner, lock it into place like that. That holds the tensioner out of the way. Now grab your boom. Now make sure when you grab the boom and you pull the belt straight, we need to rotate it. So while we're pulling on the belt, and we hold the boom in our hands, you rotate it to the left like this. So now that the belt is rotated, we'll double check after we're done, but you're gonna rotate counterclockwise. You're gonna slide the boom through all of here. You're gonna push the boom into the boom block here. Sometimes you add a little bit of uh, oil on this would help. You don't have to, but it does help. It sure does help. Okay, so now slide this guy in carefully. Make sure that belt is still twisted to the left. One twist is all you want. Make sure it's straight before you twist. So now if you look in the helicopter, you're going to notice there's a notch here and there's a notch in the boom. So now you're going to carefully slide this guy up into here. And I did something wrong. I put this bottom in upside down. It needs to be flipped over. Right, so when you're putting your front boom block in, it goes this way. Bolt hole to the top. Read the instructions. They tell you that. <laughs> right, now that we fixed my stupid mistake, I am human. I do make those. So now just go ahead, slide your boom straight in. It will slide in effortlessly. Get that front to lock into place. It slid in nice and perfect. Push it all the way up. Go ahead and turn the helicopter over for a second. We're gonna rest it just like this. And we are going to go ahead and get this belt on to the tail pulley. We might have to slide the boom up a little bit more. There we go. Now we can slide this back and now we'll tension the belt. But before we tension the belt, let's make sure of something. So the rotor head is going to spin clockwise and the tail needs to spin counterclockwise so if you spin this rotor clockwise you should be able to see the tail spinning counterclockwise so you see this grip or spinning the rotor clockwise the tail spinning counterclockwise that's how we know we have the proper twist in the belt everything is free 
Make sure again, when you're doing your belt twist, it's only one quarter turn. So that belt comes out straight and you rotate one turn. That's all you need to do. So it's gonna be coming out like this, turn half a turn to the left and double check before you go any further that your belt direction is right. All right, now let's tighten the belt. Now we're gonna tighten the belt tension. So we're gonna take this guy right here. We are going to slide it into here. We are gonna take this little three millimeter bolt and we are going to lock the clamp down. So go ahead and tighten this all the way up and lock it into place. And then just turn this screw right here, pretty easy, self-explanatory. And just keep tightening this guy till you get the proper amount of tension on the belt that you feel is good. I always go by feel. You can feel if it's tight or not. That feels a little too tight, so we're gonna back it off a little bit. That feels good. So now I'm going to lock the actual boom clamps down with a two and a half millimeter driver. Start with the back one. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these guys all the way up. And then I'm gonna do the front one. Tighten this guy all the way up. Once you are happy with the tension of the belt, now that boom is locked into place, you could go ahead and pull the tensioner lock off. So now your belt is tensioned and you can pull the boom, the belt tensioner tool off. So the next step is going to be the rudder push rod. I know in the manual they tell you to do that first, but I always just do it later on. You can do it however you like. So if you watched any of the other SAB builds, remember you know, your end cap slides on, but we need to do a couple things. So first thing we need to do is grab a Sharpie, magic marker, whatever you want to use. We're going to slide that cap on. And we are going to just mark to the end. We're going to flip this push rod over. And we're going to do the same on the other side. We are going to mark to the end. And that's going to give us a reference point because we're going to have to sand this. Now they tell you in the manual to use uh, CA glue. Personally, I don't like that, but you can do whatever you feel comfortable with. I use epoxy. So I just simply grab a little piece of 120 grit, I think this is, yeah, 120 grit. And I'm just going to line up to that little mark that I made. And I'm gonna spin it. And basically just sand and rough up that carbon. So we're gonna do the same on the other side. You're gonna sand, rough up that carbon. Once we got the carbon fiber roughed up, I like to cut just a little piece of, I think this is 220 grit paper. I roll it up and I insert it into the aluminum end cap. And I just push it and twist as I push it. And this sands the inside of the aluminum and gives you a really, really good strong bond and just marks it up. And then you do the same with this one. You just roll this guy into here, sand, now again, this is not said in the manual, but I overbuild everything and I like it to be nice and perfect. So now we'll take ourselves a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol, clean everything real good, and let's get ready to glue. Then I grab the little push rod ends, I mark them in half, I take some 220 grit sandpaper, just sand, just to mark them up. I wanna make sure that my glue joint and my bond is extremely strong. And I know you have threads here, so this is going to help big time. But I just want to clean these up, do the same on both of them, and then clean everything really good with rubbing alcohol, and we will start epoxying. Right, so we got our end cleaned. We're ready to go. I've already mixed up 30-minute epoxy. So I got my 30-minute epoxy mixed up here. And I've already looked, and we're going to want 28 and a quarter inches or 717 uh, millimeters from end to end. So... What I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of epoxy and I'm going to grab our end that we sanded up and I'm going to just put a little bit of epoxy, smear it through and take your carbon fiber push rod that we have already cleaned and I'm going to gently and carefully twist, come on focus, and push it into place. Okay, now I'm going to keep a paper towel down here so I don't get it all over my table. And I'm going to smear some 30 minute epoxy and have a paper towel ready with rubbing alcohol too. 
So that way you can clean your epoxy when you make your mess. Now we are ready to grab our cap end. Gently and carefully slide it on. Now sometimes what will happen is it gets caught. So you got to hold it here while you push here. Just till you get this all the way down and flush. I like to rotate it. And I like to look for that mark and insert it back in. So now I'm going to take my paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and I'm going to carefully as I push twist and clean my excess epoxy off. This is going to give me number one a good glue joint, number two a clean glue joint which is what we go for on our builds. So now just take a clean paper towel, wipe some excess off here. We got a little bit on the threads here and then you're gonna flip it over. Do the same for the other side. But before you glue your other joint, make sure you grab this little sleeve and you slide this on. Because if you don't do this now, you glue it, you're SOL, you'll have to buy another push rod and do it again. So now duplicate the same process on the other side and we will let it dry. So now we're going to move on to page 29, which is going to be this little bearing support. So it is going to be quite simple. You are going to take your bearing. You're going to slide this guy down in there like that. And then you get these little screws that are countersunk that are going to hold the bearing in. One and a half millimeter driver. Go ahead and run all these screws down and tighten them up. You're going to have four. One, two, three, four. Tighten all those up and then we can install it in the helicopter. All right, so now that we went ahead and screwed these down, used Loctite, of course, this whole assembly is going to go in, screws up like this, and it is going to sit, see if you guys can see that better, it's gonna sit down on here, in between the frame rails, just like that. And then on the side, there is going to be two holes. Now you're gonna to have to cut these holes out, I am assuming, because they are not cut out. So on the side, these decals that are here, that are right here, you're gonna to need to take an X-Acto knife and there is decal holes right here and here. So you're gonna take, cut those out with your X-Acto knife and then run the screws in right, there. So we went ahead and cut them out with the X-Acto knife. You can see here, we'll clean them up after we're done running the screws in. Two and a half millimeter driver, you are going to simply line it up. Make sure you put the washer on that screw and run that screw down. Now don't tighten these screws all the way up. Get your next one and wait till you get all four of them in place and then go back and tighten them down. Make sure you use Loctite, of course, on the screws themselves. You guys already know the deal. You have to Loctite everything. So go ahead, put the other two screws in, then go back and tighten all four of these up and we'll move on to the battery tray. All right, so now we're gonna get started on the battery tray assembly. You're gonna have your little guide rails here. Look at which way they go holes to the outside just going to bolt on they're going to go just like this in the helicopter so you're going to grab this little carbon fiber tray here and you'll notice one two three four this is where this tray is going to sit so for that you are going to use these little screws right here one and a half millimeter driver you are going to lock tight your screws of course always always lock tight anything that is going into metal and not going into a lock nut so go ahead and get one started grab your next screw and do the same thing. Put all four screws in and then we can move on to the latch. I just like to get these guys started and don't tighten nothing. And of course you have to drop something and don't tighten it up yet until you get all four screws in and then continue tightening your screws up. Right, we got all four screws in, wiped it down with some rubbing alcohol to get the leftover Loctite off. So now we are going to grab this little tray right here. So now if you notice, you're gonna have this little piece here and that is going to slide into this front hole. It's gonna line up like this and you're gonna have your countersunk hole there. So now what you're gonna do, grab your one and a half millimeter driver and the small little countersunk screw, get yourself some Loctite on that guy. Go ahead and line this back up with that line pin, alignment pin. It can only go one way. As far as front to back, you can put it on upside down, I guess, but I don't even think you can do that. So now when you're done, it should look like this. This is going to sit down in there. You're going to have the angle forward. So now you're going to see three different holes here. If you lay this here and look, 
this is the middle hole. So we're gonna grab our little cam lever piece and the long bolt. We are going to get some Loctite on this guy and a two millimeter driver and we're going to go into that middle hole. So go ahead and tighten this down and note that we want the cam lever to be about here. Tighten this down like this. Okay, and I have that there. And then you're going to grab your beauty rings, put them on your screw. You're gonna have a two millimeter driver. Go ahead and get some Loctite on that. Lay this piece down into here. And then get that screw started. And go ahead and run the other screw down as well. All right, so next step, we're gonna go ahead and mount the battery tray. Now the battery tray is gonna go in the helicopter like this. So you're gonna have your tab on the left side. This is your battery release tab. And your plates facing up, rails down. So you are going to just simply push the tray slide it through the frame like this you're gonna have a bolt hole here you're gonna have two different size screws you're gonna have a six millimeter long screw and a 10 millimeter long screw so the front screw and this back or middle screw here this screw and this screw are going to be six millimeters long on both sides and then the back screws are going to be 10 millimeters long so go ahead grab your next screw run that down into here Make sure that you get this one. If I can find it, I'm sorry, it's this screw hole here. This screw hole. Tighten that guy down. These are gonna be your six millimeter. So six millimeter, six millimeter. And then you're gonna grab the 10 millimeter, which is longer by four millimeter. And that one is going to go into this back section right here. So you'll have to clearance your sticker a little bit and then go ahead, run this one down. Tighten it up completely, move on to the other side of the helicopter and do the same. All right, so we went ahead, got the battery tray fully installed. Our latch is working perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and end part three off here. I know this is over a 30 minute video. It's just a lot of stuff to fit into each video. So in part four, we will finish up the last little bits that we have. We have the canopy mounts left, the FBL mount, uh, grommets left, and then we will start on the wiring. We gotta solder up the bullet connectors for the motor ESC, solder up the battery bullet connectors, and start running all the servo wires. So we're gonna end this video off here. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I wanna thank Damien again for letting me build this magnificent helicopter. It is just incredible. I absolutely love this thing already. Love the carbon fiber boom too. So I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for watching. Give this video a like, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.